live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now here's your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to the Cube, SiliconANGLE Media's flagship program here at VMworld 2016 in Las Vegas. Happy to welcome to the program Venugopal Pai, who is the Vice President of Alliances with Nutanix, and Julie O'Brien, who is the Vice President of Corporate Marketing mm -hmm. at Nutanix. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having us. Hi, Sue. Good to see you again. All right, so uh, Pai, I spoke with you at Dot .next yes. a couple of months ago. Uh, that day it was 118 degrees, I think, here in Vegas. Something like that. I think like it's that. only supposed to hit about 104 uh, right now, but uh, here in the convention center, the air conditioning's on. Uh, I'm kind of happy, usually, that I have a jacket. But uh, from an Alliances standpoint, uh, Give us the update on where you are. VMworld, we obviously talk a lot about ecosystems and partnerships, yep. and some of the complexities there, so, so where is that? Absolutely, no, thank you. Uh, it's great to be here at VMworld uh, this, uh, this time around as well. Uh, this is like the sixth or seventh time since uh, 2011, 2009 we've been here, so uh, it's always been a great show for us. Uh, VMware has always been a great partner as well, uh, despite uh, you know, certain areas of contention that I think every major industry vendor would grapple through as they grow as a company, uh, but I think uh, we are going through those growing pains as any company does, um, but it's, uh, VMware has always been a great partner, continues to be at most levels, and uh, us being here is a testament to what our customers want of us, partners want of us, and uh, I know customers depend on the ecosystem to build a business on, right? So it's an important part of, uh, I think, what they depend on and what they build their confidence on. Yeah, so Pai, you know, people that don't understand these relationships, maybe they, you know, they read the press uh, information and they're like, you know, oh, Nutanix kicked out of PAX. Oh, you know, VMware and Nutanix in a, you know, epic war of death because it's <laughs> vSAN versus, uh, you know, your solution. Can you talk to kind of the engineering relationships? Where are their connections? How do you work together with a company like that? No, um, no, great question. So we work closely with VMware on all aspects of the certification and the validation because if you look at where we start as a company, and a lot of our revenue as well in terms of where we grow as a company is based on, on ESX virtualization, but we your platform, right? So uh, we work very closely with VMware, both on the support side, to make sure that any customer situations that do arise, and they do arise more, a lot of times, if they do, we want to make sure that the customer is not penalized in any way, shape, or form, right? Uh, so that's one side of it. The second side of it is we go through a lot of certification across the spectrum of the applications and the APIs that VMware puts out either through the the storage portfolios or the vSphere portfolios, as you look at that spectrum, that integration and the simplicity of what they want to see when they're choosing ESX is a fundamental element of how we work with VMware, right? And then as you expand that out, customers want to see more from us as two companies, again, part of the ecosystem, right? So we continue to build on that, uh, but it also depends on how far we want to take that given, like you said, you know, there's, there's a little bit of competition you know, on the vSAN side, uh, and a little bit of competition on the hypervisor side, but nonetheless, I think it's, it's a choice for the customer, and I think it depends on what customer wants to deploy, and what they choose to deploy should be without a confidence on how they want to make sure that if something goes wrong, and if something you know, may, needs to work, that as two vendors, that we work together to make sure that it is successful. So that is the fundamental element of why people have ecosystems, right? And that's fundamental to how we treat ourselves and I hope VMware treats us as well. Mm -hmm. Sure, Julie, perhaps you can share some of the customer perspectives. You're working with customers, you have customers presenting here. We're going to have some yeah. on theCUBE this week. Yeah. Uh, how, how do they see this interrelationship? Do they pay attention to something like, you know, some of those, you know, little bit of battles? You know, I think, um, honestly, the vendors are probably the ones who pay the most attention to it, right? Um, Customers are just, they're looking for a solution. They're expecting that the vendors are going to come together and work together to solve the problem. So uh, I, th I think a lot of the, the, the heat that you feel or the friction that you feel tends to really be more at the vendor level. And the customers are the ones keeping us honest to, you know, to do the right thing, which you know, we always will. Yep. Um, but yeah, so I think Steve Bunch is going to be here on Wednesday uh, from Mubash to uh, talk about some of the solutions that, that he's rolling out and uh, should be a great segment for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no. yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And so you, you, you've both been in Vegas a bunch recently. Yes. Uh, there was the recent uh, Cisco news, maybe you can kind of fill us in and you know, how customers drove that because once again, it's one of those, you know, Cisco's made some news about their position on it, but about what you're working with customers. Sure. Um, so if you look at our ecosystem as a whole, right, so we, we grew our ecosystem over the last two, three years since we, we kicked it off. We have over 70 partners in our ecosystem, right? And over 100 solutions coming out with over 11 to 15 API-based integrations with a lot of these ecosystem partners. 
In addition to that, uh, we have Dell and Lenovo as OEM partners mm -hmm. that are leading with the HX platform and the XC platform. But we didn't want to stop there because again, like Julie said, it's about what customers want to deploy and how confident they want to feel in deploying our solution. So towards that end, uh, we announced our capability of our software running on the Cisco UCS platform a couple of weeks ago, literally at, in Vegas, mm -hmm. uh, as you can tell, right? So, uh, and what that led us is really is, is based on two things. One is customers that demanded their choice of hardware vendor and the choice of Nutanix on that hardware platform, right? And so we, we bent, rightfully so, on those customer demands and partner demands. Mm -hmm. And the press release that we issued, I think a couple of weeks ago again, yeah. kind of reflected the fact that you know, partners like Presidio and customers mm -hmm. uh, that basically said, this is a good thing for the industry because it allows Cisco UCS, which is one of the flagship platforms for, uh, for Cisco as well, uh, with Nutanix's software, allowing them to really build a web scale architecture. So when they want to build a true enterprise cloud, this allows them to bring the best of two worlds together. Mm -hmm. right? So that's kind of what led us towards doing Dell and Lenovo and continuing down the trajectory, but at the same time, expanding the portfolio with Cisco. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's interesting, because if we look at kind of the maturity of the hyperconverged marketplace, uh, too many people thought of it as boxes. And from the beginning, of course, we understand it software. From the first time I talked to Deeraj, which was actually yes. at VMworld, I believe, four years ago, uh, it's about distributed architecture and software. So, can you walk through, you, you talked a little bit about some of the OEMs, yeah. but maybe expand a little bit more of on no, the so, role of so software. Like you said, you know, Deeraj rightfully, you know, uh, and now kind of talked about, you know, the evolution of the company, right? So, everything we do is on a software level, right? And if you start looking at how that evolves from a product perspective, right? We, we ODM from Supermicro and we sell it as an NX product, but at the same time, being the software company that we are, we're able to extend that capability so customers that choose to have Dell as their primary hardware vendor can then choose to continue down that thread path mm -hmm. as opposed to saying, you know what, I like Nutanix, I like the software path, but now I'm mandated to go down a hardware path that I'm not comfortable with or I choose not to, right? So then Dell and Lenovo becomes options for them to consider so that this software that we build on abstracts all the capabilities that typically a three tier, four card architecture would have been mandated to build on, right? And if you look at what's happened over the next last four or five years, and over the next two, three years, the evolution of what Intel architecture has done to enable the software to really be empowered even more with NVMe and 3D Crosspoint brings the application much, much closer to the storage and almost at the dim level, right? So the evolution of software is truly the future of where we see the industry going, and the choice of how customers want to consume this software become their choice that they want to make. So that's the reason we pursued down our continued route of having an NX platform, mm -hmm. but at the same time, customers' choice of choosing either Lenovo or Dell, or for that matter, Cisco, becomes something that the customers mandate and therefore our responsibility to meet that mandate. Yeah. All right, so Julie, the other thing, every time I talk to Deeraj, you talk yeah. about the culture of the company. Uh, you participated in an event uh, here in Vegas yeah. uh, around diversity. Maybe you can share yeah, with the audience yeah, what that was. Yeah, it was great. So uh, it was a cross-industry event, right? So we had um, panelists from Dell, from Nutanix. We had a representative from Cisco, and also a woman who works in the Oakland uh, School District who helps uh, Girls Who Code basically come together, as well as Anya Manuel, who is just fantastic. She's with the uh, Rice Hadley Gates uh, consulting group, so she's got a lot of experience that she brings to the table as a lawyer, but also working in uh, the federal government as well. And it was a great opportunity for us to get together and talk about a really hot issue uh, in IT and in tech, which is how do we create a, a more diverse workplace, right? And just coming to share best practices in terms of things that we could be thinking about uh, together in terms of how do you cast a wider net at the top of the funnel so that you're actually not going back to the same places time and time again, or the same schools time and time again, but just thinking differently about the candidates you might be able to bring into your company. And then also taking a look at what are the things that you can do to retain and grow those, those people once they're in your organization, right? Not just women, but also Hispanics, African Americans, right? And um, thinking through different programs that you could be rolling out that could appeal to those groups, as well as people who might be on the cusp of retiring. Uh, that have a lot of value to bring and you know, want to continue to work. So it was a really great uh, conversation, very uh, empowering, and it was um, just amazing to see the uh, engagement in the room. It's clearly a hot topic across the industry. So we're going to continue 
to have that conversation. We're gonna, we're gonna roll it out quarterly, uh, timed with some of these big industry events. In fact, the next one that we're gonna do is at Dot .next in Europe, which is our user conference. It'll be our inaugural event for Europe that's happening uh, November 7th, and I think you'll be there too, so it'd be great to follow up with you on that as well. Yeah, that sounds great. We're looking forward, we're going to have theCUBE, it is in Vienna, mm -hmm. uh, it's the week actually of the election, so uh, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll see where uh, where that all lays yes, out. But uh, right. it, it's great, you know, it's an it absolutely hot button issue. The Cube, yeah. we're hugely supportive yeah. of, of women in tech. As a matter of fact, uh, we've got a big event coming up uh, in the fall, uh, for, for the third year the Cube is doing the Grace Hopper uh, event, awesome. so we will have, we've actually sponsored fellowships uh, through the Ground Truth, what's called the Tech Truth. Uh, so very supportive. Jeff Frick's kind of our leader of that uh, in the Valley, and obviously a hot button in Silicon yeah. Valley. So yeah. and, and he, I mean, Julie, it's, you know, you work for a tech company in the Valley. You know, anything you took back from you know, the panel that you saw? You know, I think there was a lot of good advice from uh, different experiences, different personal experiences. You know, one of the programs that we're looking to roll out uh, is called uh, NewFlex. And it basically is a program to appeal to either um, employees that may have either aging parents that they need to take care of or they need to downshift a little bit because they're dealing with some family issues or again, they could be on the cusp of retiring and don't necessarily want to um, fully exit the workforce. So we're just starting to pilot that program, but we're really curious to see what kind of talent that's going to bring into the company for people who maybe thought, you know what, how do I, how can I really work at a kind of a, a fast moving place like Nutanix, right? Um, so it's 20 hours and uh, we'll let you know in three months what that looks like. But a lot of good advice from across the, across the women who were presenting and sharing and uh, a lot around um, really looking for not just mentors, but also uh, sponsors, people who put their social capital on the line to really be invested uh, in you uh, as an individual and to not be afraid to ask. I think that sometimes uh, you know, women in particular, we, we hope if we, we do a great job, it's just going to get noticed and great things will happen. And you need to be uh, an active participant in your career, kind of be the CEO of your own career. Great. Yeah. So I want to give you both just a chance, uh, any kind of big takeaways from Nutanix here at VMworld as, as people either that, you know, didn't get to see the whole show or that are watching remote, what you would you want to share? Pi? Yeah. I think the big takeaways is, um, I think it was, it was great to see customers uh, time and again come and visit. Uh, it was good to catch up with a lot of the customers and partners that are visiting here as well. So I think it, I think it was a great event. It continues to be a great event that we continue to foster and, and be a part of. And uh, as we look forward to the to uh, the VMware Europe and and the V forums that are coming up, uh, I think it's uh, you know VMware has really done a great job in bringing all of us together and building an ecosystem that you see around here. And uh, that's something that uh, you know is hugely applauded. So. It's, it's good to be part of this. Yeah, clearly a lot of excitement around the enterprise cloud, uh, which is fantastic. And uh, you know, I was just uh, in the booth a few minutes ago and just the crowds that are trying to learn, trying to engage and, and learn what this is going to mean for their business are really fantastic. And just to echo what Pai was saying, you know, we're really active in the VMUGs and I think it's been a, a great platform to be part of that kind of conversation with other ecosystem members in terms of what that means for solutions for customers, so. Good stuff. Yep, great. Julia O'Brien, Vinico Palpai, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from VMworld 2016 in Las Vegas. You're watching theCUBE. Thank you.